Nacy, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank all the witnesses uh, for being here today. Um, you know, there was some discussion about uh, uh, labor, and I know my colleague was talking about sequestration, maybe the loss of jobs. But, um, Mr. Besharoff, you've, you've talked about uh, in your testimony how a number of European countries have incorporated activity or welfare to work provisions into their social programs. Uh, many of those countries have done so while dealing with high unemployment and other difficult labor market conditions. Based on your research in the area, you know, what do you say or what um, have those European countries said to those who argue welfare to work policies cannot be effectively implemented or should be suspended during times of high unemployment? Well, that's the crucial question here. And I think the answer depends on the political system or the political party in charge in each country. Uh, there's been a real pushback in Germany uh, and somewhat of a pushback in some of the uh, Nordic countries, uh, but in the countries run by liberal or socialist governments such as France, there's been no pushback. Here's the argument. They look at that chart which I showed you on figure one, and they see someplace between 60 and 70 percent of the people who are eligible to work in the right age category working, but 30, 35 percent not working, and they see that number growing. And they don't think that they have a future economically when the number is decreasing, when there are fewer people working. And so they take a deep breath and they say, we have to push as many people as possible into looking for work. When they do that, two things happen. Number one, people who otherwise were disenchanted or, or discouraged about finding work, some of them find work. And the other part that happens is because there are people looking for jobs, and there is a push and pull about this, because there's more supply of workers, especially low-income workers, employers are more likely to expand and hire people. Now, this isn't a magic potion, and we're not going to eradicate unemployment. But we do have to use every means at our disposal to get the United States back in fighting shape. And this is one of the ways. One of the ways is to encourage everyone who is of the age to work and healthy enough to work to look for work. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Turner, Congress has spent years designing reviewing and modifying work requirements in TANF programs, and uh, it is for that reason I strongly believe that any changes to requirements should be first handled by Congress through legislation. Um, but I, ask, I would ask, if this waiver is allowed to move forward, is it a possible that uh, states could maybe even want to go further with waiver programs like this? Well, what we know from uh, good work programs is that even if they're, even if somebody's not in employment, if he's engaged in a work activity that's uh, creating something of value, it is of value to the recipient himself. For instance, in New York City, uh, we, uh, the welfare recipients engage in work in the parks uh, throughout, uh, throughout the city, which has increased their um, level of cleanliness from 85 percent to 95 percent. So why is that important? because those people going into the parks are learning important lessons about work habits, reliability, staying on the job, taking direction from supervisors. And these, the these are the things that employers say are most missing among the low-income population, work habits as opposed to work skills. Okay, so to answer your question from that point of view, I think that once you get away from a program which offers an opportunity to actually provide work in a work-like setting, and you do things like bed rest or uh, staying in a remedial class, you're losing the opportunity to do what we call work hardening or getting organized around the idea that to take a job, you have to be prepared to keep the job, to stay on the job, and to get along with people. That's the, that's the main thing that you can learn outside of the labor force in a workforce setting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.